I wanna take you for a ride. We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and sell our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. And today we're going to be looking at probably one of the greatest consoles ever made. I'm sure these guys will agree. <laughs> oh, I bet they freaking love the Switch, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, I'm with them to be fair, and I know the console is far from dead at this point, but for me, the Switch is my third all-time favourite console. Seriously, it's one of those machines that simply got it right, and just like last time Nintendo hit a home run, you can be damn sure that no matter how many remakes they can cram onto the system, there'll be ten times that amount of crap that the average Joe believes that he or she can do better. Sometimes they get it right, like the how the hell did Nintendo think of it first flip grip, which I seriously bloody love. And then of course you've got idiots that for some reason spent £506 here, and $8,323 here, on bloody stickers for your Joy-Con, so that it sort of looks like it's got its tongue out. <laughs> You guys remember this stuff, right? Back when the system was first announced? It's insane. A combined total of 1,248 people spent real world money on this. But thankfully, they came to their senses because by the time the third campaign came round, that one thankfully failed. But as crappy as these tongue stickers are, they are far, far, far from the worst that fans of Nintendo's best ever system had to deal with. And today, I'm going to give you five really, really bad examples. Yes guys, I'm DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room and this is four of the worst Nintendo Switch Kickstarters. God, I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying the dog tongue stickers are crap. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> This one, guys, is a real stinger for me because, my God, would you look at this game? Without a doubt, my favourite classic 90s arcade racer would have been Scud Race, such an awesome game that I actually featured in my top 10 Sega IPs that didn't get sequels video way back when. So yes, the 90s arcade racer indeed tickled my interest. It's stunning. It looks like they got it spot on. The campaign was over on Kickstarter from January the 18th, 2013 for 30 days, as usual, asking for a measly £10,000 and smashing it when 700 backers got it to £16,039. It was expected to release on November of the very same year and, well, you know how these things go, delays can and do happen and that release most definitely slips by again and again with well, sort of okay updates from Pelican 13, the game's creator himself, and then on November the 1st, 2015, yes, two whole years after the initial release date, he showed us this. Oh, God. again, guys, let me just say, this game looks stunning. The update also showed billboard artwork that higher-tiered backers had paid to have their own custom artwork put on there. A very clever idea, if you ask me. And that most recent update went into exactly what was still needed to do, which turned out there wasn't that much left to do, and the reason a few of those dates got missed. Again, none of this is really that bad in the grand scheme of things, at least updates are, although slowly being given. But the problem was, this was the very last update on the game that had now obviously moved on to the Switch from the Wii U, yes it took that long, as well as the PS4 with the thanks of the awesome publisher Nykarlis. Heck, if you go on Nykarlis' main website you can still see the game as coming soon because like I said this was the last ever update from Pelican 13. Now guys, I understand projects sometimes fail or run out of money, it's the risk you take when you do crowdfunding. 
But what really grinds my gears is when campaign owners simply disappear, even though they are still very much active online over on Steam, where he is now making the takeover. Now guys, this is where I am seriously torn. The guy has most definitely moved into the scammer category as far as I'm concerned, considering how badly he's treated his backers. But the takeover is not only another insanely good looking game, but more importantly, I actually know plenty of the good, honest people that are working on this title personally. Pelican 13 is without a doubt the main guy, however, and it's very obvious that all of his attention has now moved over to this beautiful game. Whilst this beautiful game that the public helped fund has been left to die. Or so it seems. If anybody from Nykarlis or even Pelican 13 himself, which I do believe is probably watching this video considering, like I said, I know a few people working on the project, please give any kind of an update into exactly what is going on with this dreadful campaign. Ah, oh, poor old Mensky. Without a doubt, if you're like me and you love to take your switch on the road, then the short three to four hours worth of battery, well, it isn't ideal. Yeah, sure, this obviously all depends on what exactly you're going to be doing or playing on the system, as something big and juicy like playing Zelda will most definitely suck more juice out of your system than, say, Iron Cryptical. And by the way, guys, that's a really, really good game. Go and check that one out. But regardless, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It's just what it is. Obviously, as soon as the Switch came out, everybody knew that this would be a problem. And one of the first people to jump onto this and provide a, a sort of fix was the company In Demand Design over on Indiegogo. What they was offering, however, was more than just a battery booster. The double your size Switch backpack not only added roughly 12 hours of extra life to the system, but it also gave you two extra slots for storing your favorite games and a rather impressive looking kickstand that Nintendo, let's be honest, got so horribly wrong when designing the Switch. This was back on April the 5th of 2017 and very quickly, like 48 hours quickly, the lucky owners of this campaign managed to get it up to 342% above its goal when eventually 4,314 backers spent an average of about $85 each and got it to a combined total of $416,139. Not bad at all. And you know what else? The device is actually pretty good from what I can tell. Yeah, you was expecting me to say it was crap, perhaps the battery life wasn't as good as expected, or that it simply bricks your switch. But in this instance, it actually looks to be a pretty solid bit of kit. In fact, when you Google search it, you find plenty of channels, extremely reputable channels by the way, who got theirs and the reviews are pretty much solid, besides the slightly expensive price point of course. So I hear you all ask, what's the big deal here then, Dan? Well, unlike these lucky peeps that managed to get their hands on something pretty awesome that over 4,000 people helped back, and of course you, the person going to the website contemplating picking one up yourself, the problem is the backers haven't been that lucky. Not only was the device delayed by quite a bit, resulting in plenty of other companies jumping in and selling similar stuff online whilst these backers wait years for their rewards, but after looking at the comments section, it seems that a crazy amount of backers are yet to receive it at all. Now, in all fairness, this isn't the biggest scam going, considering the product has been released and at least some backers have in fact got their products. But the sheer lack of any kind of update or communication and the sheer cheek of selling and even giving away review units before the backers who actually helped pay to make the thing a reality got theirs... Yeah, that's not on, guys. At the very least, I would expect the guys who run the campaign to leave more comments or updates for those hardcore Nintendo enthusiasts, especially considering there's no real reason to not believe that they don't have these things in stock considering they're selling them on their website. 
It's just a really crummy way of running a business. And the way it's going right now, if these poor souls ever do get their rewards, then it will probably be after the Switch Mini is released and In Demand Design will no doubt do all of this again. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't they, right? Hey Nintendo, is it okay if I take your most popular game from your most popular ever system and make a remake? Okay, thanks, bye! Ah, oh, good old Victor Pereira doing what he needs to do to bring Project Sports to the Switch. Actually, why hasn't Nintendo made this title? I would have much preferred this to one to Switch, am I right? But here he is anyway, and I'm sorry to say, guys, there really isn't much here. Like, seriously, there's actually nothing here besides some sporting icons showing off what 10 games would be available. And for only £50, you could actually get yourself a Project Sports baseball shirt with the game logo and signatures from the team. Oh, and you don't even get a copy of the game at that level. <laughs> Yeah, obviously some projects are just so horrific that literally nobody backs them, which is exactly what happened here, and is exactly what happened in Victor's previous campaign too, called The Cult on All Consoles in One Hybrid. I wonder where he got this idea. But give him his due, unlike the Switch, this bad boy can actually run emulators, which actually makes it a hell of a lot better than what Nintendo is offering online. Again, am I right? Another campaign owner that decided to steal IPs was Ben Tyers, who went out to create 50 retro game remakes, although looking at the video, it's safe to say these are definitely more like demakes. Again, nobody backed this one, thank god, it was his 10th campaign, and almost all of those campaigns are game maker software tutorials or games that he's made himself, besides his Dictionary of Swear Words book. And every single one of them, obviously, was a failure. However, again, thanks to flexible funding, in total, Ben was still able to pull away with $438, which is most definitely <laughs> more than what Atari made when they attempted to crowdfund Roller Coaster Tycoon Switch. Oh yes, who remembers this bombshell from the beginning of 2018? It's all gone quiet now, hasn't it? Whatever happened after Atari asked fans of the series to actually pay out of their own money to continue working on the rather popular Roller Coaster Tycoon franchise, even though the company states that in the first 20 seconds of the campaign's video that they earned over $2 billion in previous Atari properties, and now they need at least $10,000 from you guys if you want to see another roller coaster tycoon. Now, let's just step back a bit. Star Engine is very different to Kickstarter and Indiegogo because this is an investment crowdfunding site. The minimum to put down here is $250 and in return you will actually earn money based on the possible success of the game after it's released. The funniest thing about all of this is that besides the possible financial return on a game series that was very much dying a death by this point, is that at $750 you still wouldn't even get a copy of the game, but instead you'll get a nice 25% off. And at $1,500 minimum, not only will you still get that 25% off, but you'll get a regular copy of the Art of Atari book. <laughs> Come on, you can't even spare a download code, you cheap sods. Yes, the campaign spread like serious wildfire, hitting sites that didn't even cover gaming, disgraced at how stupid the company was for not only treating the franchise, but also the fans. And get this, the final paragraph just before the endless stream of negative comments on the page explains that the money invested might not even go on the game. It could end up anywhere else at Atari. Yeah, the whole thing was a massive, painful lesson that Atari really should have foreseen. But this was all new that was popular, like I said, back in early 2018. Very much a case of chip wrapper news almost instantly after, as the campaign got removed and no money was ever taken. But what actually happened to that roller coaster tycoon switch game? Well, in December 2018 it actually came out and it was renamed Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures. 
And it's a pretty crappy game. Getting an average score of about 6 out of 10 all round. My god, Atari. Will you never learn? <laughs> yes, I'm sure I can help answer that in a future video. Ah, yeah, anyone out there that follows news on the Nintendo Switch will know that third-party chargers and docks are just not a good idea. Yes, there are hundreds to choose from, and Nintendo themselves don't exactly make it easy for you charging 25 quid for an official one. Bloody hell! Yes, now in all fairness, most of these rumours are just that. Rumours, I myself have used several different types of phone chargers and whatnot in the past when charging my Switch, and I still do quite often. But these stories obviously do have some truth to them, as we are about to find out with the Pelda Pro, the first Nintendo Switch battery case with HDMI. Yeah, this isn't exactly anything new, like I said. Was it the first? I doubt it, maybe, but still, it's very much commonplace nowadays. This, just like the one previously mentioned, charges your Switch for only 4 hours extra this time, and it also has two game slot holders, but the big difference is the micro HDMI connector, which lets you plug it into your TV. And yes, you knew it was going to happen somewhere on this list. Not only was this device crazy late, created by fictional people that as far as backers can tell, never even existed, most likely to get around Kickstarter's rules of only certain countries being able to create a campaign, but when it did arrive to some of those backers, incredibly late of course, in quite a few instances it was not only incredibly cheaply made, it was either dead on arrival, or worse, after charging it fried itself and had a strong burning smell. But of course this is still not all as quite a few people that got it were so scared of the vice bricking the system that they literally never used it and some of those ones that did, well that exact thing happened to them. After a day of playing it fried my switch and I had to send it to Electronics fits, who fits my Switch brand new. Yep, another instance of a brick creating dock. But hey, perhaps you want to take the risk. Some people have, not many mind you, but some have had nothing but good things to say about the dock. If you are one of those people, then don't bother spending close to hundreds of dollars on the case like some of these people have, and quite a few are yet to receive. But instead, if you actually went to their website recently, then you was actually able to pick one up for $38. Oh, that's nice of them, isn't it? Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to all of my Patreons. But first, obviously I want to give an extra big shout out to the sponsor for this video, Player One Clothing. If you want to go check out any of the t-shirts or caps they have on offer, then please do click the link below. And also, if you want to check the game that's playing on the screen right here, there'll be an affiliate link for that too. But anyway, back to those Patreons with a big special shout out going to that retro video gamer, Gary Pinkett. Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Jonathan Haywood, Tom Grabowski, Christopher Turnbull, Brent Craft, Ben Jackson, Phil Lowland, Mr. Vestek, Dana Robertson Dunn, Lefty, Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Labonte, Asobi Quang, DX, Tim Lund, Genovi, Hernanez, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constantine, Pretend. 64, Creamy Elephant, James Loveridge, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, Savage Gaming Show, Gemma at Mr. T's Shirts, Monster Finger Games, Creators of Alien Scumbag, Mike H. Fell, Looser Softail, Ye Old Hamburglar, Gregory Arden, Bew Wright, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Solux Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus King Emma Cut Tyndall, June, The Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float G, and Petty Mew. If you want to get your name shouted
that out. Come and get your name shown. Come see what I'm working on and all of the other stuff, like seeing videos like this early. Then click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever you prefer. And guys, if you do want to join my Kick Scammer Army, there'll be a link to my Discord partnered Discord room down below. But anyway, guys, this is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time.